Tom Aspinall. Welcome back to BT Sport, buddy. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm very well, mate. I, I, I want your gym routine. Look at the shape on you, lad. i tell you something. I saw a picture last week on Instagram. Bit of body beauty. Are you trying to get yourself a modelling contract or something? What's going on? Which I've got one. Don't know. I've not, no. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm just... Uh, I've took the rehab very serious. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be a fat slob. Since, uh, basically, since I could walk, a lot, not even when I was on crutches, I was crutching it to the gym, mm. lifting weights, doing what I can, because I was uh, not happy, to say the least, of the outcome of the last fight. That is not the way any fighter wants to do it. Especially, like, I put in such a good work in the training camp mm. and sold out the O2. I'm not saying I sold it out on my own, but... I did have a lot of hype behind me after the after the last fight, and uh, yeah, just disappointing, embarrassing, and I want to redeem myself and I want to show everybody that I'm not just a guy who falls over after 15 seconds. Have you dealt with the mental challenges of being out? Because you speak to any professional athlete who's restricted from doing the thing that they love, yeah. it's a frustrating time. It's tough. It, it, to be honest, for a little bit it was nice because I, I was fighting so regular. Yeah, that it was a lot of pressure building up and stuff and I, I did enjoy the little time the, the hardest bit for me was like right after surgery and I couldn't walk and the kids are off in the summertime and I planned on going seeing the family in Poland for like four weeks after so I had like loads of work workers coming to like do my house up and stuff but I had to return home early for surgery so then the whole family come back with me and I remember just being sat there, I had like 10 workers in the house, working on the house, asking me questions, I couldn't walk, the kids wanted stuff, and it was just horrendous. I was just sat there thinking, this is not good. <laughs> but we're back now, we're moving forward. There must have been a temptation to rush it, because obviously we've got a massive card, 286 London, big pay-per-view event, people would expect your name on that card in any other time yeah. when, when yeah. you're fit you're obviously back you're training you're training properly again why just pump the brakes take the time and make sure that you're absolutely 100 percent before well i was again? relatively fit when like from like six months out i couldn't i could spar again and everything like i was relatively fit mm. uh but i feel like i rushed it the knee problem's been going on for a long time and now it's fixed and everything's great but i feel like i was kind of pushed into I, I said yeah to a few stuff that I wasn't ready for before and I don't want to do that again and I'm aware that I need to be able to take kicks in it of someone my size mm -hmm. and that's not an easy thing to do and I want to make sure that I'm I can, that can't happen again like I can't be lay on the floor holding my knee again like that just can't happen ever again so I want to make sure that I'm like 100% ready to go when I come back I can't like let myself down and the fans down like that again. I just can't do it. So I want to be 100% set the world on fire when I come back, not half do it. So in your head, give us a date. Give me July. Give, July. I've got an opponent as well. So. Game on. Oh, well, it's Are you not, allowed to tell us or what? No. You know. But it's that. been verbally agreed publicly. So I'm, I think if I tell you though, I might get told off. Right, so, okay. but it's been, uh, do your research, bro. Why not do your research? Yeah, but I'm not allowed to say it. <laughs> yeah, because well, I'm not allowed to say it. I'm not allowed to say it either. But uh, right. it's been verbally agreed, no contracts or nothing. Are we yet. allowed to say where it is? No, I don't know where it is. There's no con not? there's no contract signed. But, there's no date. But, but I've got an opponent. That's the most important thing. Okay. But it's highly likely to be at a certain place. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I honestly oh, don't know geez, about this, that. People are going to be watching this interview going, "These two guys know stuff, and they're not even saying no, the stuff." I know my opponent. Fair enough. But I don't know anything else. That's all I know. And the most important thing is getting an opponent. So yeah. um, a lot of the top ten were already but they're already booked. Basically, all the top ten apart from the one guy that we've agreed to fight. So yeah, that's why we were uh, going with him. Time for him London. Yeah, that might be. Uh, I just let you know. That's very likely. Just let you know that it's time for him. <laughs> anyway, right. I don't know if it's in London. You're saying it's in London. I don't actually know how, if it's. There's in a high London. chance, right? Yes. We'll move on for it yes. just in case both of us get into okay. trouble. Um, what have you made of the division moving on in that period of time? Because obviously now John Jones is the heavyweight champion. Super in the interested in it. Like um, I feel like it was all stuck for a little bit. And Garnu didn't really want to take a fight, but he didn't want to be out the UFC. And then certain guys weren't taking fights because they didn't want to risk the like number one contender spot. And it was all a bit funny for a little bit. And now it's just opened up massively. The goat is the champ of my division, which is amazing. Whether he's going to stick around 
for the duration or not is still mm. nobody really knows um yeah it's just good like we've just got so many up and comers right now the top 10 or maybe the top 15 in my opinion is probably the best that it's ever been ever yeah that's, yeah i'm not saying that the well the champion's the best that it's ever been as well but i think that the top 15 heavyweights right now are the best that it's ever been since the ufc started in my opinion talent wise when you think let's say john does stick around for a long period yeah. of time when you think about the opportunity of being able to step into a cage with john jones what does that make you feel oh like? mate absolute dream fight i would love that fight just to say that i thought john jones would be um, like for me he's a massive inspiration i've watched him since he won the light heavyweight title which was about yeah. i don't know how many years ago but uh yeah that would be something wouldn't it that would be something how many fights do you think you're away from that uh probably two or three I think, I think it seems quite fluid at the top of that division. To be fair, doesn't it? Yeah, a lot's changing. A lot. I think with the heavyweights, it's more about like impressive performances than it is anything else. I think if you can get an impressive knockout and an impressive finish, that's better than a five. Like let's say Blades and uh, Pavlovich fought, yeah. and Blades held him down for five rounds, yeah. and then I fought my next opponent, and knocked him out in 30 seconds mm -hmm. in like a violent way I think that would put me even though I'm ranked lower than Blades Absolutely. that would put me like maybe a little bit of, it just depends on that it's well, all even, about excitement even what you've just said there if we if we cast our minds back to this time last year when you were fighting Volkov here and the performance against Volkov when we've just mm -hmm. seen Volkov do what he's done against Romanov mm -hmm. that in fact with retrospective look at it actually boosts the, the level of how impressive that performance was. Yeah, I, th I think uh, a lot of my wins age well. Yes, they are doing they, they, yeah, they, they are, are doing. Like Spivak's coming on really good now. Yeah. Volkov, well Spivak, when I fought Spivak, he was on a five fight win streak. I beat him and now he's on a three fight win streak. Yeah. And similar with uh, Volkov as well. He was on a win streak. I beat him. He's on a win streak again against a couple of good guys. See his fight with Rosenstruck, he looked unbelievable. Mm. Absolutely pierced him with the right hand straight down the middle. It was. Volkov's no joke, same with Spivak, Spivak's a, me and Spivak are probably going to fight each other again at some point, we're both young guys, up and comers, around the top five, top ten, we're probably going to fight closer to a title at some point, um, and yeah, everyone's doing well, the heavyweight division is amazing right now. So are you anticipating at least one more after July this year? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm not in a rush, I'm in no rush, I'm not even 30 yeah, but yet. Activity, so. activity's key, isn't it? Oh, you mean for this year? Yeah, oh, for I want to fight twice this year, easy, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely, definitely. Definitely, I'd love to do that. And then maybe next March, which would be UFC 300 time-ish. Yeah. That, that sounds quite nice for a, a world title shot, doesn't it? It does sound pretty good. It does sound, but like I say, I'm not in a rush. I'm not like, I need to win the title right now. I'm not, not like that. I'm in it for like the long haul. I'm, I'm aware that like, heavyweights usually, if you look at the state of the heavyweight division for the last like 10, 15 years, Usually, generally speaking, heavyweights peak between 35 and 40. I'm not even 30 yet, so I'm completely aware of that. Maybe first assassin, mate. I am nearly 30, though. 30 in a couple of weeks, but I'm still claiming the 20s for right now. Are you but, doing anything for it? Nah. I, I don't like the fuss. I don't like the fuss. <laughs> I've got out for a few drinks and that, but uh, yeah, I'm not too bothered. And just to finish off, mate, um, I have to concede. Last time we spoke, it was about the gravy on the fish. You now know that. Yeah, but you got a London one. You That's not, not. Yeah, but you know I've tried it. Good though, isn't it? It's all right, actually. It's, it's very good. Underrated. Um, you did it a bit wrong, in my opinion, though. Go on. You poured it on top of the fish, didn't Go you? That. If it touches, it's all right, but you can't go direct. Direct's a bit. That's full on. I've gone all in. That's. I wouldn't trust you with my kids and <laughs> stuff like that. I wouldn't trust you in the care of my children. <laughs> Just well, if it touches it's alright if it touches but straight on top that's frowned upon heavily uh, as, you, as you can see it's going to be quite an entertaining <laughs> week with you presenting TV wheels um, yeah, I'll on, try and keep it at bay <laughs> I'll try and keep it at bay are you looking forward to it? I am looking forward to it yeah it's nice to be here and hopefully I don't know yet Saturday night's not come hopefully not have anyone try and punch me on Saturday That that is quite nice not have the stress of someone trying to uh, knock me out on Saturday but we never know. We never know. Hopefully no one will. But uh, it doesn't seem that way anyway. Mega, there you go. Our new co-presenter this week, Tom Aspinall, with myself and Nick, uh, bringing you USC 286 on BT Sport.